What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today we're going to practice our Python programming in automation skills. But instead of being in AWS like we were last time, today we're going to be in the Google Analytics for API. Now I know you may be loyal to AWS and familiar with AWS and haven't done much with Google, but don't worry. All you really need is a Gmail account. You don't have to spend any money and the setup's painless. And as engineers, we need to be ready to jump around to different environments so that we can get better well-rounded with these clouds. So anyways, here's the scenario today. The dev team is asking that data be pulled from Google Analytics 4 to get the top five posts from the past 24 hours. So what the dev team is doing is they're building out a front end part of the website where they have a trending section and they need the top five posts from Google Analytics in the past day so that they can list those five there. What they need you to do is use the Google Analytics 4 API and Python, pull the top five posts from the last 24 hours and write them to a JSON file. Then they'll take that JSON file and do whatever they need to do with it. So this video will walk you through it. It will challenge you to write the code and find the solution yourself. With all that said, let's get started. Now, if you wanna see a practical example of what this looks like, you can go to my homepage at travis.media because I do this very thing. I have a section called Today's Trending Posts where I pull from Google Analytics the top five posts from the past 24 hours. And what happened was I was doing this for a long time and then I migrated to Google Analytics 4 and I looked one day and this section was blank because I'm not doing anything in the old Google Analytics anymore. So when it was running the script, it wasn't pulling anything. So I fixed that and that's what stemmed today's video. So that's what it looks like practically or visually, but your job is to produce a JSON file of an array of the top five posts from the past 24 hours. You'll get this data, you'll automate it to do this daily, and you'll update this, and then the developers will take this and make it look good on the page. So your job is to pull the data to automate that, and the developers will make it look nice. So first, let's create a virtual environment by running Python dash M V E N V V E N V. If you don't know what this is, it's just creating a Python virtual environment. You can go to Google and just type in Python V E N V and just click on that library and you can read all about it. But essentially it creates a virtual environment and then you activate it. And then when you install packages or whatever you do, it's all contained within an environment. So it's not running those on your whole computer. It's just running it within an environment. So create this environment. And then we're going to activate it by doing source V E N V slash bin slash activate. So let's create a new Python file to work with. So I'm going to do touch popular.py to create that new file and then create a folder called data. And within that, just create a file called popular.json. That's where we're going to output our JSON to. And you can just leave that blank. You can put an empty array. Doesn't matter. When you run this, it's going to override it. So save that. And where do we start? What if you don't know anything about Google Analytics? Or what if you're coming from the old one and you're trying to migrate to four? Well, in any case, we just pull up the documentation and find out. So let's open Google and we'll do something like Google Analytics 4 API and we'll click on the first result. And we have an overview. You can read about this, available methods, but I'm gonna skip ahead to the API quick start. And this is good because it says this page shows you how to get started with the Google Analytics data API in your favorite programming language. For us, Python. So number one, enable the API. So click this button to one, create a new cloud platform project, two, to automatically enable the Google Analytics data API, and three, create the service account needed for this tutorial. So that's three things in one. Let's click this button and see what happens. So enable the Google Analytics data API. So enter a new project name. Let's do uh, GA4 test. Click next. You've successfully set up your project and created the service account. Next, download the private key you'll use to authenticate your service account. Store this file securely as anyone with this key can act as the service account. So download the private key as JSON. Click this button and let's put it in our project. So let's go to desktop. And I'm going to find my folder, which is ga4-python. And I'm just going to save it there. So save. And I'm going to change that file. Instead of all these letters, I'm just going to put service account, service underscore account dot JSON, because that's what it is. 
and click done. And that's literally it. Now I haven't used that before, but that's way easier than what I did. You can go to console.cloud.google.com just to confirm that all of that worked properly. Go to dashboard. And once you're here, up here at the top, just click this drop down and see if you can find your project. So go to all to see everything. And here's GA4-test, which I just created. So click on that. So if you did this manually, you would go to APIs and services. And you'll see here that the Google Analytics Data API is enabled. If not, you just search up here and enable it. And then you go to credentials and you see the service account that was just created. So what we did was just a shortcut for what you would do here manually. So let's go back to our API quick start. So enabling the API, we did that. Step two, add service account to the Google Analytics 4 property. So using a text editor, open that JSON that we just downloaded, that key that we just downloaded, and search for client email to obtain the service account email address. Use this email to add a user to the GA4 property you want to access. So you can click this link and it'll tell you how to do it. I'm gonna give you the shortcut and I'm not gonna to go to my credentials.json. I'm just gonna go here to what we created and copy it. So here's the service account. Copy that, and then I'm gonna to go to my Google Analytics, find my right account. So here is Travis Media GA4. Make sure you have your Google Analytics 4 account chosen. Then go down here to this gear to go to admin. Go to account access management. Click on this plus symbol, add users. And add that user account that you just copied. After adding that, choose a role. I'm gonna choose editor. I think viewer may be enough, but if not, I'll have to come back and change it. So I'm just gonna set editor for now. Later I can test if I can downgrade it to viewer. So I'm just gonna put editor, click add, and we've added access for that service account to our Google Analytics. So let's go back and step two is done. Step three, configure authentication. So to do that, we just need to set where our credentials are located. So let's copy this and go to our Python file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import the OS package because it's easier to do it this way. Paste in what they gave me. And instead of doing this export, let's do the Python way of os.environ for environment. And then in brackets, let's grab this Google application credentials variable and put it here because that's what it has to be. You can provide the service account credentials by setting this environment variable. So let's grab that and let's do equals and the path to our file, which is just the name of the file because it's in the same folder, service account.json and erase this. And that's it for that one. So step three done. Next, install the client library. So we're using Python. So let's click on this and figure out how to install it. So installation for Mac, Linux, Windows. So pip install virtual env, we've done that, we've sourced it. And all we have left is to install the Google Analytics data package. So copy that and we'll do pip install. Well, I think that's already copied. So pip install Google Analytics data. And I can also read the client library documentation for the Analytics data API to help out. But instead, I'm just gonna keep moving on this quick start because they give a good example here. So here it says make an API call. Now you can use the data API to query a Google Analytics 4 property. So let's check this out. Let's take this whole code here, copy it and paste it and just see if it works. See if everything we've done so far is right. So there's a couple things we need to update here. First, we need to update this property ID. And actually I'm gonna take this all out of a function. I don't really want the function. I'm just gonna take the whole thing and run it as is. And save it. And we need to uncomment this property ID and we need to update this with our property ID. Let's go back to Google Analytics. And here in the admin, you'll see it under property. So Travis Media, here's this 3214 number. You can also go to all accounts up here and find the account. So Travis Media GA4, here's the number, 3214 on and on. So find your number and put it here in the code. All right, that's done. And I think I'm just gonna try to run it. So let's do Python and the name of the file, which is popular.py. Let's run it and see what happens. All right, so it gave us a bunch of cities. If you look here, the request 
looks for the cities of active users from 331 until today. And then for each row in the response, it just prints it. So down here, you have the city and the number of active users in that city. Now we need to tweak this to get the most popular pages. How do we do that? Let's go back to our documentation. So this works, we're done with this. We have an idea of what's going on. We create a client, a analytics client. We create a request by this run report request, and we put in variables as to what we need. So the property, we have the property updated in our code. Now we need dimensions, we need metrics, and we need date ranges. And to do that, if we look over to the left, we see a section called API dimensions and metrics. So let's figure out the dimensions we need and the metrics we need. So click on this. Now, if we go back to Google Analytics, we can kind of poke around to get an idea of what we need. So let's go back home. And down here where it says recently accessed, uh, click next and go to pages and screens. So this will give you the most popular pages. Maybe I need to search for pages. So let's go back to dimensions and search for pages or just page. So here's file name. We don't need file name, full page URL. We don't need the full page. We need the relative path. So let's keep going. Landing page, no. Page location, page path. That looks pretty good. So instead of this HTTPS example.com slash store slash contact us, you get slash store slash contact us. Now that would be right, but I also want the query strings. Like that doesn't hurt anything. That gives me more data. So let's do page path plus query string. Feel free to do page path if you want to do that. But I'm going to do this one and come back over here. And instead of city, I'm going to paste in the page path plus query string. So that's gonna give us this relative path. So that's done, but we need to sort this by the most users, the most active users on that page. So let's go back and let's look at metrics. What can we do with metrics? So let's scroll down to metrics and we have like active one day users, but that's for something else. If you read about it, it's not for what we're looking for. What we're looking for is active users, the number of distinct users who visited your site or app. So what we're getting is the metrics active users for the dimensions relative path. So it's just like we look at this page and we get this relative path in the number of active users. And it's actually gonna rate it from greatest to least for us, I think. So that looks good. And then the date range, what can we do for the date range? So let's go to uh, creating a report and let's just see if we can find some reference to date range. Um, report request, a valid entry in the date ranges field. Let's click that and see what happens. All right, so here's the date range field. So we have a start date, an end date, and a name. Start date can be in the format year, month, date. Cannot be after end date. The format in days ago, so we can do one days ago. Yesterday or today is also accepted. So let's actually just do from start date yesterday to end date today. And that's not exactly 24 hours, but that gives us all of yesterday's data plus whatever, wherever we're at in the current day. So this gives us a day's worth of active users and the page paths for those active users. Now we don't know uh, these row dimensions. Let's copy that out, all of this. And we run a response by doing run report and then entering in this request as the argument. Let's just print out the response and see what happens. Let me clear this. Let's try this out. All right, so what we get is a bunch of rows. So we get a bunch of rows with the dimension values of the relative path and the metric value of the active users. And if you look at this, the active users go from greatest to smallest. So we don't need to do any sorting or tallying of users or anything like that. It's gonna give us greatest to least. So we can just grab the first five off the list. So how do we do that? Well, let me give you some hints and then maybe you can go ahead and see if you can do it and then come back and see how I can do it. Let me pseudocode this for you. So loop through and this right here will work for row and response.rows. That's gonna loop you through all of these rows. And then from there, you wanna add the relative paths on each loop, on each iteration to a list. You don't really need to deal with the value because it's going from greatest to least. 
So add all of the paths to a list. And then after that happens, cut the first five from the list. And that should give you the top five. And to add a little fun to this, we want to exclude some pages. This isn't going to just pull the posts. This is also going to pull your popular pages like your home page, like your about page or your ebooks page or whatever. So I'm going to give you a number of pages to also exclude from this. So you're going to get the top five. Then you're going to make sure that these pages, these excluded pages are not in that top five. So let me add that here. Here's, here's the list of excluded pages. So uh, excluded pages equals, make sure those don't show up and give that a shot. And then the last thing you want to do is write the final result, which is an array of relative paths to the popular.json file. And that's what you need to do. So give this a shot if you want to. Pause this, do it, and then come back. Or you can follow along with me. So here's how I'm gonna do it. So for row and response.rows, that's fine. We want to get the row.dimension values, which is here, and then the first item value. So that's gonna be slash, that's gonna be this path, that's gonna be this path. It's just gonna be the relative path each time. So that's all we need. We don't need the metrics. So erase that, but we're not going to print it. We're going to come up here and create a pages list list. And we're going to append to that list. So let's do pages list dot append. We're going to append that value. Once that's done, we're going to take uh, a new variable top five equals pages underscore list, and we're gonna slice out the first five. And we do that by doing zero, colon, and then the last number is not inclusive. So we need to put a five, even though it would be zero through four, but putting five also includes the four. It's just the way this slice works, or splice works, whatever it's called. And then we need to deal with these excluded pages. So I'm gonna take this and come up here to the top under property ID, and just put that here as a variable. And for row in response.rows, grab this value here. If this value, this relative path, is not, not in excluded pages, then only append to the list. So this is gonna weed out the slash, the ebooks, the Udemy, the search, all of the pages we don't want included. And this may grow, I may need to add more to this if they get popular. So let's actually print out the top five. Save it and see what happens. Let's run this, see if we get the top five posts. And we didn't stop this print up here, so we got a bunch of extra stuff. But if we look at what actually printed here is one, two, three, four, five posts and none of them are in the excluded pages. Let's take this out and just see if any excluded pages come up. Let's run this again. Yeah, there's my home page, slash. So the excluded pages works. Save that. And then finally, we need to write the final result to the popular.json file. And we can do that by going with open, and then the data slash popular.json. That's opening that file, and we're gonna choose write, because we're gonna write to the file as F. This is just how you write to a file. This is basic Python. You can Google, how do I write to a file? And it'll show you this. So hit colon, and then do f.write, JSON dumps. This just converts this data to a JSON string. And then for that argument is the list, top five, and then indent equals four to make it clean. And again, if I just come up here and type in uh, Python write to file, JSON, something like that, click on it, and you'll see the same thing pretty much. Yeah, with open, the name of the file, write as whatever, whatever dot write JSON object, and for that JSON object, they're doing the same thing. JSON dumps the list and indent equals four. You can find it anywhere. So since we're using JSON dumps, we need to import JSON at the top. 
That should take away that warning. And it didn't, and that's because I did JSON underscore dumps. It's JSON dot dumps, because we're doing a JSON method. And that's it. That should write to my file. So let's erase this print. Let's erase the pseudocode. Save it. Erase all of this to see if it works, and let's run it. I'm gonna open this file and let's see if it writes to it. There it is, that quick. And that's all there is to it. Now we can say, hey developers, this is all set up, but we haven't automated it. And I think this video is too long to add the automation now, but if you're interested in that, I can do a video on it. Just let me know below. And if I get enough people that are interested, I'll do a video next on it because on my own website, I created a GitHub action that fires once a day runs this Python and resets my top five. So that's the Python. That was the goal of this video is to set up the Python, have the code ready and update the data accordingly. And to automate it, just let me know. I'll do a video in the next couple of days to show you how to set that up in GitHub Actions so that you can have the actual automation behind it. But I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.